Hey guys, welcome to Sandals Church, and we're gonna be doing something a little bit different from our home to your home. And today we're gonna be talking about literally the difference between an interruption and a disruption. And we know that all of our lives have been interrupted this year. I mean, on every level, in every way. But sometimes God wants to use a thing that we're gonna call a divine disruption, where he literally doesn't just wanna interrupt our lives, but he wants to disrupt it so our lives are never the same again. So we're gonna do some singing together. I mean, we're gonna like, do a little singing. They're gonna do most of the singing because <laughs> they sound great. And then we're gonna hear just a message from the Word of God. And we're so glad that you and your family is joining our family today. And we hope that Christmas was a blessing to you. And we just wanna take a step back today and look at what Christmas should be for us moving forward. So join us together as we sing, as we listen to the Word of God, and as we pray together. So I want you to think about the difference between an interruption and a disruption. And I realize a lot of it's just nuance, but I want you to think through this because our lives have been interrupted. COVID has happened, all of this stuff has gone on, it's been very, very difficult, and so many things that we plan have been interrupted. But what I think God wants us to do during this process is he wants what I'm calling a divine disruption. So an interruption is an act or an instance of interrupting. Now, when I was a kid, I was told you couldn't define the word by the word. Dictionary.com didn't have my English teacher, but they said it's an act or instance of interrupting. It's a temporary cessation or an intermission. So in other words, an interruption is what I wanted to do is stopped, and then there's a period of time, and then I go right back to what I was doing. But a disruption is a forcible separation of division into parts. It is a radical change, listen to this, especially involving the introduction of something new. So the difference between an interruption and a disruption is interruption, I'm doing what I want, there's a pause, and then I go back to what I want. A disruption is I'm doing what I want, there's an interruption, but I can never go back to the way I was or what was happening. And so a lot of us, Christmas is an interruption. For a moment, we remember family, songs, friends, we get all sweet, and then we go right back to the way that we were. And Christmas is supposed to be a disruption. It so radically affects us and changes us 
that we can no longer go back to the way things were. We're not interested in an intermission. We're interested in literally a transmission of something new and amazing from God. And so COVID has been an interruption, but Christmas is a disruption. And so let's take a look at Luke 2. Um, you can read this together on your own afterwards to your families, but it, in Luke 2, it says, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, kind of like our Governor Newsom, right? He's from on high in Sacramento. He just gives us a decree. And so Caesar Augustus, we can call him Governor Augustus, but uh, he said the whole empire should be registered. And so politicians make these changes in our lives where we just have to kind of figure out what to do. And it says that this is the first registration that took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. And so everyone went to be registered to his each town. So we all have to stay in our homes. Under this order, they all had to leave their homes. And so as bad as what we're doing is, man, they gotta go somewhere else. And oh, by the way, Joseph's wife is pregnant. And so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family line of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him, and oh, by the way, is pregnant. And if you're not a Christian, that this is what it's all about. She's pregnant with an incredibly special child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in a cloth and laid him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for them in the inn or the lodging or any place in the entire town, because it's packed. In that same region, here's another interruption. Shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. And then an angel of the Lord appeared before them and said, literally, do not be afraid. Why? Because they're terrified, they're frightened, they're freaked out. He said, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today, a savior who is the Messiah of the Lord is born to you in the city of David. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. And so what was an interruption for Mary is ultimately gonna be a disruption for them because this baby in an unusual circumstance, I mean, nobody wants their baby to be born in a barn. Nobody wants their baby to be placed in you know, a place where animals eat, but that's the sign. That's the sign that your life, my life, our lives are never gonna be the same again. And then instantly, Suddenly there was a multitude of angels, a heavenly host. So we had one angel that was speaking and that was scary enough. Now we have a whole group of angels praising God and saying, listen to this, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. And no matter where your life is today, peace on earth and goodwill toward you. God wants to disrupt your life today with goodwill, his goodwill from heaven. No matter what's happening to you on earth right now, right here, the Lord wants to bless you with his goodwill and he wants to disrupt your life with his peace. Let me sing this out. I can't hold back my praise. I'm gonna let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I'm gonna let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I'm gonna let it out.
song. That was great. Amazing song. It says, and then when the angels had left and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what happened with the Lord that he has made known to us. And they hurried off and they found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a feeding trough. And after seeing them, they reported the message that they were told about the child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all of these things in her heart and meditating on them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. And here's what I want you to think about. A lot of you say, well, shouldn't we have talked about this at Christmas? Absolutely, but really a disruption is about what happens after the event. Okay, an interruption is something that just hits you and you kind of respond to it and then you go about your business, but a disruption is something happens to you and you're forever changed, you're forever different. And what I'm praying for for all of us is that we need a divine inter- disruption. We need this. We need this in our lives, we need this in our hearts, we need this in our worlds. Otherwise, we're gonna go right back to the way we were. And I wanna focus on really two ideas and we're gonna talk about this. I think Tammy's gonna share some of her thoughts. Um, It says that all who heard it were amazed when the shepherds said to them. So we have an audience that's amazed. And sometimes we just hear the word of God, there's an interruption, you know, we do church and then we go right on about our business. You know, and sometimes as parents, amen, we give a talk to our kids, we think think we've we've resonated with them and they go right on about their business. But, But these words about this baby disrupted their life. Mary treasured these things in her hearts, meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying God, these stinky, gross shepherds. They're different. So a divine disruption is what I need. It's what you guys need to be a part of literally what God wants to teach us in this season. I know a lot of our parents are are frustrated with, they've had to become homeschool parents. And and parents are pretty passionate. You either are a homeschool parent or you're not a homeschool parent, right? You're one way or the other, but everybody's kind of had to figure this out. But this has been a divine disruption where we all need to realize, hey, I need to be a part of how my kid learns. We just kind of took it for granted. You know, you drop off your kids and they magically hopefully get smarter. Um, And a lot of you, you know, you came to church and you just thought, oh, the church is gonna teach my kids about God. But we haven't been able to do that. And so there's been a divine disruption where God is saying, mom, you know, even if you're a single mom, even if you're a single dad, your job is to teach your kid about me. You as a parent reflect me. And so here's this, this, this just amazing, amazing divine disruption. And I want you to think about this verse, especially a lot of you parents, you're frustrated at your kids. Your kids already, aren't already grateful. They've already forgotten about all the money that you didn't have, that you spent, and you're frustrated with your child. And so all of this stuff is happening. Mary's had to travel. She's in a town uh, that's not her own. She's with Joseph's family. They're frustrated. She's just given birth to this baby. She's in probably a cave. There's animal poop everywhere. Her baby, her firstborn child is lying in a manger, which is a trough for animals where they eat. But she's told all this stuff by the angels and she's hearing all of this commotion about this baby that's born. And it says, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Because this isn't, Jesus isn't an interruption for her. He's a disruption. She's probably 12 to 14 years old. Think about that. Up to this point, her life has been all hers. And from now on, her life is about this kid who, by the way, just doesn't need to learn to read and write. He's got to save the world. 
And I want you to think about parents. I want you to think about the child that you're raising, that kid that drives you crazy. And one of my favorite things at Sandals is um, to watch people from my past, old Sunday school teachers, old pastors, old friends, and they show up to Sandals Church and they just sit there and they're like, I did not see this coming. Well, my parents <laughs> didn't see this coming either. <laughs> but let me tell you, moms and dads, the reason Mary is pondering this is because she has a hard time looking at this baby going, this guy's gonna change the world? This guy, we can't, we, this guy couldn't even manifest a hotel room. This guy's gonna change the world? And so she just thought about this, everything that God's saying about her child. And I want you to think, parents, what is God saying about your child today that you can't hear? Because I was that kid. And there's nobody more surprised at Sandals Church than Peggy and Steve Brown <laughs> at what the Lord has done, right? Miracles exist. So what could your child be if you guys started taking seriously, you know, your role in helping teach our kids about the Word of God? Because somebody's got to teach Jesus how to learn, how to read, how to write, how to think. And so we got to think about this at Sandals Church. I'm not going to be around forever, ever. So who's the next little guy running around our church that's going to lead us? Mm -hmm. And that guy is probably a terror in our church. <laughs> I was sitting at church when you were singing um, a couple weeks ago. You and your daughter were on stage, and there was a single mom in front of us. Uh -huh. Do you remember? Three boys, one girl, all under the age of probably six. About halfway through the message, one of the boys, did you see it? He just whacks his brother yeah. in the face. <laughs> and they're sitting in front of us. And, 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 and I just thought, oh, what a problem child. And then I thought, what if that's our future pastor? <laughs> right there, man. You know, he's distracted. He's interrupting what I need to hear from God. And what if that's not an interruption? What if that boy is the disruption? And God is saying, he's passionate. He let his brother know, yeah. <laughs> you know, you need to listen. And that poor single mom, huh? She was all the way at the other end, as far away from her kids as she could be because we don't have children's ministry for her kids. And I just thought, instead of being critical of that kid, and that's what a lot of us do, you know, why aren't they quiet? The question is, Lord, what do you want me to do to help teach this kid to know and love you? Because a lot of you are frustrated with the way our world is, the way young people think, but who has allowed their life to be interrupted so that they could be a divine interruption in the child's life. You and I, we're not saved unless Mary and Joseph allow their life to be disrupted mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. So a little bit, and by the way, you say, well, I don't have any kids. Joseph, that ain't his kid. It's the Lord's kids. And all these kids at Sandals Church that haven't, think about this, they haven't been able to go to church. For all, it, it, it may be over a year. We're, we're trying to figure it out. We got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm to catch up and teach these kids, not to live like the world, but to live like Jesus. And so Mary just pondered this in her heart. Um, you know, this interruption is stinky. Stinky strangers show up. You have any idea what, what sheep's herders smell like? Shepherds, man, it's gross. They've been out at the field and they show up to your baby's party. You know, these are not the people you want there. You just gave birth to a kid. You know, I remember Tammy, you didn't want to see anybody. She's like, nobody's coming in, everybody out, no pictures. You know, your mom's like taking pictures of everyone, even strangers, the nurses, we don't know. <laughs> um, and, and here's these random dudes. Who knows what they were doing out in the field before the angels show up? But the angels show up and it says, and when they saw it, they made known to him saying, we've been told concerning this child. Man, we all need community to speak prophetically over our children, to speak prophetically over relationships. Hey, there's more to this story than what you see. I want you to know that an interruption, right, is one kid smacking his brother. A divine disruption is the Lord prophesying and speaking about that child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're in a barn, but these shepherds are saying the Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, Ethan and I were at 7-Eleven and my son used to love Slurpees. And so we would do mandates. And so the only thing about mandate is mom can't come. It's just men. We do man things, which really was nothing. You know, like we would go get a milkshake or something. But he loved it. Whatever and so, secret. secret. Yeah, it was me. secret from mom. It was man time. And he wanted to go to 7-Eleven and we went to 7-Eleven and we got a Slurpee. And as we were walking in, there was a very scary homeless man sitting out front. Now, this is not a condemnation of all homeless people, but you've all ran into that one person where you're like, okay, there's something off here, maybe particularly spiritual, spiritually off. 
And I could tell that this, this person was dark and scary. And so I, I positioned my body in between my son and the homeless person who was right in the way of the door as we went in. And I made eye contact with him because I wanted him to see that I saw him. And he looked at me and he said, I'll never forget it. He said, you are a man of God. He said, you pastor a church and you speak for Jesus. It was one of the most frightening but powerful things I'd ever seen. Clearly, spiritual things were at work in this man's life. And I said, how do you know that? And he said, the Lord told me. It was amazing. What I thought was an interruption, what I thought was just maybe, you know, an unsafe moment with my son turned out to be a word from God. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that sometimes God speaks to us in different ways. Sometimes he uses a donkey because sometimes it takes an ass to speak to an ass. <laughs> Pray about that if that's you. <laughs> and sometimes God, sometimes God uses something scary like stinky shepherds mm -hmm. to come into my home. You know, are these guys gonna rob us? No, they came to praise your son. They came to praise your son. And I just wanna challenge you. Um, we all need to be divinely disrupted. And one of the ways that we do that is by going to church. And I think that's one of the things that's been interrupted in our lives. And that's one of the things that we watch, right? The online attendance goes up and goes down and it goes up and it goes down. Every single one of you, every single one of us needs to be disrupted every week by God mm -hmm. with a divine word. To keep my life divinely disrupted, I need those shepherds speaking to me. Here's what the Lord says about your life. Here's what the Lord says about your marriage. Here's what the Lord says about your finances. Here's what the Lord says about your children. Because without divine disruption, we're all discouraged. So how do I get that? I get that by listening to messages. And some of you, you know, you're just with family today. You're like, I don't even know what this is. This is a divinely appointed disruption. And next, we need God's word. We need God's word. The Bible is a light unto our path, and we need that. And God shows us the way. And we constantly need to be disrupted. I know, Tammy, you wanted to share just about, you know, you've been reading through Matthew, the book of Matthew, and you were just moved by what Jesus constantly did in the lives of people. Yeah, I just, in the idea of thinking about disruption versus interruption, I kind of think we interchange it. So as I've been thinking about that, and I'm thinking about what I'm reading in God's Word in Matthew, it's just, we think of disruption as such a negative thing. Mm. But all throughout Jesus' life, from the day he's born, which was a disruption, to the day he died, which every interaction he had disrupted someone's life forever for the better. Okay. And so I'm like, what, what needs to shift in me personally mm. that when I think of things as disruptive, to be able to pause and say, what does maybe God have for me in this? I know in this year, you and I have had, like yeah. everybody, a lot of disruption in our life. And, and it wasn't until the other side of it where we went, that was actually good for us. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I think of. I think when Jesus healed someone who was blind, forever now they see. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who couldn't walk, forever they're disrupted, they walk. Now they, everything was different for the better. And we think of like, oh, that disrupted, or this was disruptive, or that person's disruptive. And I, I'm just like, what, what needs to shift in our perspective to stop seeing disruption as bad, mm -hmm. but to see it as a, a trajectory for good? Because mm -hmm. that's every time Jesus interacted, it disrupted someone and forever they were better. Yeah. And, I, and, and this year that's been so disruptive, I mean, we've had relationships change, situations change, finances change, location change, everything's been disruptive. And now that we're on the other side of it, we can see like, this is actually a better way. Mm. This is actually a better thing. We've actually had a better rhythm for our life and our relationship and our time with God. And so I'm just, I think that, that we as a people need to shift how we see something that's disruptive. Yeah, amen. Like we can be interrupted, but like you said, it goes back to the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. But a disruption changes and everything Jesus disrupted was better on the other side. Yeah. And, and that's what I just think of, of this, of Christmas. Like everything is better on the other side. Yeah, amen. So Luke 2, 18, it says, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. One of the ways that God disrupts us is not only through a sermon, like right now God is speaking to you, but God disrupts us through the reading of his word. 
Some of you, you've been Christians your whole life, you've never even heard this story. This story has never, ever affected you. Psalms 199, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word will constantly disrupt you and lead you to the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, I, I want you to know that, um, you know, as your pastor, I mean, we had a sermon calendar for 2020 and <laughs> it, it, it was a nice plan. Um, it, that's just what it was. Uh, and we threw it out. And so we're planning and we're praying for you and your family of, of what you need to hear. And I just really feel led by God that for 2021, can you believe it? Praise God, hopefully it comes. Uh, <laughs> But in 2021, we want to study the most important book probably in the entire Bible. To be honest with you, it's a book I've stayed away from for a long time because I I haven't felt like as a pastor I was ready to lead you through it. Mm -hmm. But if you were to study one book, the Bible has 66 books. If you were to study one book, there's one book that could tell you everything you need to know about God. There's one book that can tell you everything that you need to know about this world. There's one book that can tell you everything you need to know about you. And there's one book that can tell you everything you need to know about how to be saved and how to live your life after you're saved. And that's the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're starting a series called When in Rome, because that's where you live. And the saying is, right, when in Rome, do as Romans do, not if you're a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. When we are in Rome, we live like Jesus. And I want you to be divinely disrupted in 2021 because some of you, I love you. You think you're a follower of Christ. You celebrated Christmas, but you're not like those shepherds who left disrupted. You're not like Mary who looked at that baby and said, my life will never be the same. Some of you, you're only gonna look back at this Christmas again next year, and next year and next is never gonna change you. The book of Romans is gonna teach you how to be changed. And we need to study it. So we need to listen to it preached, we need to read it, we need to study it. This is what we're gonna do for 24 weeks. Psalms 90, 12 says this, so teach us to number our days. The old translation said it this way. We don't use the word brevity, but it's, it says, teach us the brevity of life. Life is short. Some of you, you thought you were invisible. You thought you were gonna, you were gonna, you were gonna live forever. Did I say invisible? Invincible, <laughs> invincible. Uh, if you're invisible, you're a superhero. We knew what you meant. Yeah, <laughs> invincible, I need to enunciate. And COVID has taught us, man, It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter whether you're the president of the United States. It doesn't matter whether you lived in a bunker. Uh, I mean, some of my friends that have been the most protective of themselves during this time have gotten it. Mm -hmm. And so COVID has been an interruption that says you can die. It doesn't matter who you are, how powerful you are, how rich you are. Your life is brief. Well, the scripture has always taught that. And if you're a Christian, this shouldn't be a surprise. And we have to think about what we're living for. So teach us. That's what the Bible says. Teach us, God, to number our days. Part of the reason some of you live like fools is you think you're gonna live forever. Only Jesus offers forever life. He's the only one. He's the only one that offers eternal life. You you cannot muster that up yourself. And so we need to learn life is quick, life is short. It can be over in an instant. And some of you, you, before COVID, you got to live in a make-believe world. Um, You know- I was gonna say, it's like COVID- has reminded us all that we could die. That's an interruption, but the disruption mm-hmm. is, it, it's reminding us how we should live, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know? So last Thanksgiving, you know, your mom almost died. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thanksgiving 2019 was the worst holiday we've ever had. Yeah. Um, we were in Loma Linda University Hospital, and for those of you who aren't from Southern California, it's one of the leading hospitals in the world. And the doctor came to us and said, Tammy's mom is the sickest person in the entire hospital. I mean, that's not, that's not, a, that's not a, a race you want to win. And if she didn't get a, a liver transplant, she would die within hours, the longest days. And so we got to walk with her through that process. And here's the blessing of near death. Death teaches you about life. Almost dying teaches you how to live. And that's what the Bible is going to teach you, that life is brief, life is short. And Tammy and I, we, we, we uh, rented a boat at a lake and Tammy's mom wanted to come and I was nervous, you know, she just had a liver transplant. (laughs) You know, she's still not as strong as she needs to be, but we went out on this lake and she never asked us, she never thought, she never took a vote. How many people think I should jump in the lake? Because I think all of us would be like, no, 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 no. (laughs) And before we knew it, man, she just jumped into the lake. And to be honest, you know, she's probably not the best swimmer anymore. (laughs) So she went in and I mean, she went down and I was like, 
Oh no, because I know Tammy's not. So I'm gonna be the one that's gonna have to pull her back onto this boat. One hundred percent. And so I mean, I just watch her. I just watch her go down, 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 down. And praise Jesus, she started to come up, 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 up. <laughs> and she came up, and she had this gigantic smile on your face. And she, Tammy's like, Mom, what are you doing? And she said something. Mm. She said, I thought to myself, I never know if I'll be able to jump in the lake again. Mm -hmm. And so she did it. Death is a wonderful teacher. It's why the Bible teaches us to number our mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And some of you, you're so certain that you're gonna have a next Christmas. You know, Tammy and I, we celebrated this Christmas this year without a good friend. And he didn't die of COVID. Somebody that we loved, that we thought for sure would be with us you know, at least at this Christmas and for many to come. And so, you know, let the Bible teach you. Hug those relatives, hug those kids, hug those grandmas. Be thankful for that. For some of you, you didn't even get to see grandma and grandpa this Christmas because you wanted to protect them. So let's make sure when we get through this COVID, and we will, let's make sure that we hug grandma. Let's make sure that we hug grandpa. Let's make sure that we're good to one another. Let's make sure that we care for one another. Let's let Christmas change our lives. And what Jesus gave us permission to do is love. Because at the end of the day, I don't have to be afraid of COVID. I can love you. I can be with you guys. Because the worst thing that happens to me is I go to be with Jesus in heaven. That's the worst. I know, I know who has my soul. And Christmas, Christmas means God sees us. Christmas means God came to us. Christmas means Jesus wanted to save us. And that's just such great news. Mm -hmm. So let it disrupt you. Have a conversation. Sometimes we talk about what went wrong at Christmas. You know, I always make fun of, uh, especially when we were early married, all the desserts that her family would mean, would make. She had a crazy old uncle and I always wondered what was in it. And, uh, you know, I would tease, you know, his Jello had fabulous things in it that maybe, you know, like vegetables in Jello you might not want. But, you know, those are great memories. And, um, and those are things that we need to be thankful for. So let me encourage you, um, don't let church end, even if we're disrupted. Say, okay, Lord, what do you wanna teach me? What do you want? And some of you are like, oh, I'm not watching church at home, they changed it. Well, maybe this needed to be a divine disruption to get you to settle down, to realize you're not nearly as big a deal as you think you are, mm -hmm. and to say, you know what, Jesus, I need to be thankful for you, and I need to be changed because of you. So thank you for joining us. We're gonna worship together a little more, but I just wanna pray for you. And I'm gonna pray that you would give the Lord permission and say, God, disrupt my life. Disrupt it. I don't want an intermission. I want a divine disruption. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless this family that's listening, this person. Lord, even if they're sitting alone, God, I pray they know right now that you divinely disrupt them and they would know they're not alone. God, and I pray that you would help them to love the family. Maybe they didn't want to watch today. They didn't participate. God, help them to just wonder, God, what, what might you do in their life to that kid who's uninterested, to that child who's not in church, to that spouse who's wandered away? God, what might you do in their life? What might you do in us to reach them? So Lord, help us to stop and just thank you for who you are today. God, I pray that you bless all who are listening, all who are watching from our home to theirs. God, from your home in heaven to their home on earth. Bless us, Lord Jesus. We love you and we thank you for the divine disruption of Christmas. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's close our time by just singing about the name that is above every name the name that can conquer and can heal and can save and can restore. Sing this with me. You are the word of the beginning. One with God the Lord most
want to say thank you that you would take time out of such a special weekend to be with us and to Pastor Matt and Tammy for letting us come into your home and share such a beautiful moment with you and with our church. And as Pastor Matt said in his message, the book of Romans has so much value and insight for your life. And it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum of faith, if you're curious, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you've followed him for years, this series is going to be life-changing. And so it actually starts this very next weekend, January 2nd and 3rd. You can go to sandalschurch.com to find all the locations for a campus near you or join us back here online but you don't want to miss this series. So please join us and invite a friend and have a rest of a blessed holiday season.